so I'm pretty much going to be taking pastel, which is fancy chalk. And I'm going to be throwing color on top of a dog, making it kind of look like a little bit melted rainbow-esque, and then turning it into a real dog. Okay, so I'm just going to start with a rundown of what I have over here. So this is my fancy chalk. That's what hey, I tell all my students. Do, before you do that. Yes. Okay, so we're going to get these questions anyway in the comments. Okay. What? Uh, so you went ahead and drew your dog in. Yeah. What did I you, sketched what did you it draw it in with? So I sketched it out with a, a few different pencils. I have my charcoal pencil here and I have a white charcoal pencil here. So I'll sketch it out preliminarily, prelimin, I can never say that word, prelimin, I could sketch it first. Preliminarily. With, yes, with the white and then I'll refine and start placing in just some basic values with the black. So it's kind of like a pre-sketch and then like a little bit more of a refined sketch with colors okay. that I can see against this paper. This is actually a dark blue paper. Um, it's okay. pastel matte paper. I love pastel okay. matte. It's made by Claire Fontaine. It's fancy paper. I call it magic paper because it holds so much pastel, but yet it's not sandy. It's not a uh, pumicey like some other pastel papers. That's why it's magic. I don't know how it does it, but it does it. And tell so. us again the name of the company. Uh, it's made by Claire Fontaine, and the name of the paper is Pastel Matte. Let me show you the pad right here. There we go. Claire Fontaine, right. Pastel Matte. Okay. Right. To the fancy chalk. So fancy chalk here. We have a whole bunch of different colors, but I use primarily um, Terry Ludwig's, which is a brand. Unison is a brand, and New Pastels, made by Prismacolor, is a brand. Those are my three favorites. So I have a blend of both hard and soft pastels. What does that mean, Andrea? That means pretty much the harder pastels are a little bit firmer. They're great for lines. They're great for little details. Whereas the softer, big, chunkier pastels are great for laying down bolder color, for laying down a little bit more. Um, pigment and whatnot. I use the analogy when I teach of, you could either use the, the lipstick analogy or the butter analogy. I'm, I'll use butter for today. Um, so if you were to soften a stick of butter, it would be a little bit more like a soft pastel. If you were to use a frozen stick of butter, it'd be like the hard pastel. So that's kind of the, the food analogy there. So I have a whole range of colors here, as you can see. I have a very dark, dark. This is a Terry Ludwig, very dark purple. Um, and I have a kind of a slew of purples. My students know that I am purple obsessed and there's going to be a lot of purple in this dog. Um, I have some blues here, some very faint blue grays. I have some neutrals. So these are my grays down below. Uh, and then I have some warm tones. So some, uh, yellow ochres, olives, some more burnt kind of pink tones, and some creams down below. So these are the colors that I initially saw when I was looking at my reference photo. So let me show let you. Let me ask reference. you a question. Yes. Uh, when you're getting ready to paint something, do you normally lay your colors out like that uh, in preparation or do you just leave them in your box and just grab what you see? Oh no, I'm like a sous chef over here. I have to prep. I have to be somewhat organized. So I oh. will pull what I see out. And you know what, when I paint in oils, I do the same thing. I mix my local colors and then I kind of adjust as I go. Whereas here, I may not use all these or I might have to grab one, but at least I have a, a sense of direction with uh, a preliminary palette. And where's so. your reference photo? My reference is right here. Okay. So we got our little dog here. Um, so when I first look at this, I see a lot. Well, I see a brown dog. But I want you to think about brown and gray. You walk into Home Depot, you see the color palette, you know, paint swatch there. All those shades of gray, all those shades of brown, they're like the cousin of a color. So they're all derived from some sort of color. I see a ton of purple here. I see pink. I see some olive tones. So that's where I started to pull those colors from. And if you're kind of thinking... Andrea, I don't see those colors. I see a brown dog. There's a couple things that you can do for tricks that you can um, do. Uh, you can zoom in if you're working from an iPad and really think about like, what color is that? You can use the holy paper method, which I believe I saw someone on one of your demos doing. And it's a great technique. What you do is you take a piece of paper. It's a little easier on a printout, but you take a piece of paper. You could always cut it into a nice square, but... You make a hole, I call it holy paper. 
for that reason, but it's the best tool ever. As yep. you're working, you could put it on your dog and then you can pair it also with it on your reference photo. And you can really see what color it is. It isolates it. So, I mean, that's definitely purple now. Well, take it away, take it away so we can see how our brain, no, 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 leave it on the picture. Oh, okay. Leave it on the picture now, take it off the picture, but leave the picture. Now we want to see it without the, with a piece of paper, because when you see it without it, see our brain doesn't necessarily see purple there, but when you isolate it, you do. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. let's pick another, pick another spot that, that might throw us off, maybe something on the nose. Let's do, let's do maybe right here. All right. Again. Right, like blue purple, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And even, even over here, you know, well, I can't do that. Maybe over here is almost like a, a purpley, I don't know, maybe something olivey. Sometimes my eyes are like playing tricks on me. Like I want to see a color. So I just put it in because why not? All right. So that's my reference. That's what I'll be working from. And I always start by putting in my darks everywhere. And I also start with the eyes. So you'll see me kind of branch out around the eye area. Sound good? Okay. Well, okay, we have so somebody watching from Manila. Hey, welcome, Manila. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen you before. Manila. Ooh. All right. So I'm going to go in and you know what? I'm going to bring you guys down with me. There we go. You got to have right. the sound effect, right? Okay. So this is a very, very thick um, pastel and it's hard to do these little areas with it, but I could use a black. Um, there's nothing wrong with using a black, but I try not to, unless I really have to. Um, I went several years with not knowing anything about these wonderful soft pastels. And then I discovered them and I'm like, oh my goodness, life changing there. So, so that's not a black. That's not a black. What color is it? not a black. It's a dark purple. Okay. I told you I'm going to be using lots of purples. <laughs> Sounds, like a, so. Sounds like a music group from the 70s. Deep purple. Yes, it is dun, a deep purple. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that's a good song um now here's the thing a lot of pastelists i'm kind of one of those artists where i do the things you're not supposed to do like a lot of pastelists they work upright i don't a lot of pastelists don't blow their powder i do i do all the things not to do so if you're looking for a great example of what not to do <laughs> then i'm i'm your person but hey it works for me and that's all that matters um but I just like working flat, especially since the pandemic with doing my demos flat like this. I mean, it just allowed my students to see a lot more uh, detail. They, everyone gets a front row spot, right? So yeah. can't, can't beat that. So, all right, getting in all my darks everywhere with a purple. Now, another thing is since I'm using a soft pastel, a lot of the times you want to save your soft pastels for after you lay down your harder pastels. But honestly, unless I use a black, I don't have any hard pastels that are this level of darkness. And I try to use this level of darkness right off the bat just to kind of gain my lights and my darks. Where are their lights? Where are their darks? That's going to shape my, my figure. That's going to figure out where things go into shadow, where things go into um, like the side planes, the top planes, all these different facets of the face. So I like to work that in now versus later. And if I have to use a soft, then I use it because guess what? I got magic paper. Remember, it's going to help magic me. Paper. Magic. It's magic paper. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm pretty good with some of my extreme darks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hone in on this eye here. And this dog has, you know, it almost looks like a very yellowy, um, eye, but it's, it's full of so much color. I'm going to right off the bat, I'm just going to kind of get in a little bit of light for the highlight there. I apologize if my hand is going to be in the, in the way. A little secret that I do with all of my animal portraits is I put a little bit of blue always, even if it's not in the reference photo, I always put a little bit of blue in the eye because it just looks more wet that way. <sighs> even if they're in like a very orange environment or a very, you know, green environment, always add the blue. When in doubt, add blue. Or actually, I always say add purple. My students know that. Now, for this little tiny area here, I am going to pull out my black new pastel. Now, they do make beautiful things called pastel pencils, and I have them on hand here. But honestly, I'm not a huge fan of pastel pencils. I see people do beautiful work with it, but I have yet to do that with pastel pencils. Um, the reason I'm not a huge fan, and I'll pull one out just to show you. You know, it's great for kind of blending two colors together because it's a harder pastel. It's a little bit more like an H pencil or something that's a little bit more rigid to move the pastel back and forth. But 
it just doesn't have the darkness and it doesn't have the lightness, um, like the, the vibrancy that some of these chunks can do. These chunks are packed full of pigment and I want that, I want that impact. I want that bold color um, that's gonna be loud, right? Let's get a little bit of blue in there. Some of these hard pastels just don't wanna do the job sometimes. So you have to force them. You gotta wiggle them around. Let's get that eye in a little more. Let's make them not look so looking up. I'm used to looking at my artwork shrunken down on screen, but since I'm not doing that right now, I gotta make sure you look at it from a distance, right? That's one of the key important things. You'll be able to see if your values are correct. You'll be able to see if your, um, if your color is too loud or not too loud. So we're just gonna leave that area there like that for now. And I'm gonna frame it with a little bit of this bolder pink. It's not this bold in the picture, but we're just gonna get it to be there. This is a new pastel. All my square ones are gonna be the harder pastels. I like the square ones. Um, I'm so bummed that they actually, they stopped making this brand um, individually viable, if that makes a word. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer. You can't buy just individual colors anymore. On to finding new brands that do, right? Everything mm -hmm. happens for a reason. Now, I put a little bit of pink here. I'm just going to throw a little bit of this kind of periwinkle color on top to cool it down and, and just kind of get my bearings. I'm also shaping the eye as I go because I'm still kind of in draw mode. Like, just because I have lines there, just because I have, like, some values in doesn't mean that the drawing is done. And the drawing is never done. The drawing will morph and continue to change as we work. <sighs> Nothing's ever done, right? I always use the word hand inable. Is it hand inable? Hand inable. Hand inable. <laughs> That's what I would say in college. Is it hand inable? Okay. My husband and I, who both met in college, we we were um, the same way with that. <laughs> All right. So now I, I could go to the other eye, but I kind of want to branch out around here just for the demo purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking some of the colors that you saw that I had before, and I'm going to start laying them in. So I see some purple here. Just let it be. Block it in. We can always calm things down, right? It's a matter of getting it to be bold right off the bat and then neutralize, calming it down. That's all what neutralizing means. It just means quieting. You know, I was talking about how colors are um, cousins of grays and, and uh, browns, right? When we go to the, the paint store and see all those paint chips, whereas, you know, it's, it's kind of like family members, you know, you have the quiet cousins and then you got the loud cousins. Well, right now we're putting in all those loud cousins and then we're going to are you? <laughs> what? Which one are you? I'm a quiet one. I'm yeah, quiet. Right, 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 I right. really am. I, I really am. I swear. Most of the time, I, th I think I am. <laughs> Why don't you show your reference photo again, just so people can see it every once in a while? How about if I do this? Is that better? I can do half of a piece. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's it. Awesome. It'll be like one of those makeup before and afters. I'm not going to put that <laughs> hair on there. <laughs> okay. Welcome. So Welcome. Crazy colors here, crazy colors. All right, let's get some more bolder purples in. This is a little bit of a, even though purple can be um, vibrant, it's it's vibrant color, but it's also a dark color naturally. So when we add a little bit of white to purple, like if you're thinking in paint mode, um, it tends to show the saturation. It shows the temperature of that shade of purple or any color for that matter, um, a little bit stronger. Okay. So that's kind of like how, that's like my melted rainbow stage, all right? That's my fancy sure. term right there. So now we can start to lay on a little bit more neutralized colors, calmer colors, the quiet cousins. So this is my, my favorite color. This is my 244P. It's like, I only know like five numbers, but it's a Prismacolor. It's a new pastel made by Prismacolor. It's just like, oh, I just broke it. There's just, it's just a, a wonderful, almost gray, but... It's still purple. I bought so much of this when it went out of stock. My goodness, I could go in the market just having it. It's wonderful. So this is just kind of calming things down. I'm squinting my eyes. I know you guys can't see my eyes, but I also have a black and white version here. So when I squint my eyes, I see the black and whites here 
where I know like, oh, I have to go darker here and oh, I have to go lighter here. So those are all things that are going through my head as I'm working like, oh, you know what, let me just knock this down. I could use a dark gray, I could use my big thick purple again. But if I just kind of want to lightly get that value down again, I can just graze some color on top. And then I'll throw in my texture, I'll throw in my other colors that need to, to happen on top. Let me go back to my color version though. Zoom in. If you're not working from an iPad yet, you got to get on the bandwagon because it is amazing. 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 You got to sing when you do it. <laughs> all right. This is a light gray. Now, this is where I'm like the calm guy's coming in. He's saying, all right, guys, you got to calm down, relax. Light touch. When my pinky's up, that means I have a light touch. I realized I do that. It's like I'm, I'm having tea over here. All right, I can see use a little bit of some lines gaining that texture. I will simultaneously do texture while I am neutralizing and adjusting my value. So it's kind of like two birds, one stone at the same time. It's it's a nice way to kind of develop your your sketch without having to say, "All right, I'm doing this. Next is this." You know, if you're able to do more than one, just do it. I One thing I love crap. about pastel is this ability to layer color like this. Oh, I know. And you don't have to wait for things to dry. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love oil painting. That that bull painting that you uh, showed on the um, that little intro, that was a, an oil painting. That was a large one. And I love oil paintings. But sometimes you just want to do something fast. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you want some bold color. I find I started pastel. This is actually the one medium they didn't really teach me in, in school. And this was something that I started doing just to kind of gain a little bit more fun with my palette. And it's it's enabled me to kind of just be a little bolder. You know, I would have never started with bold purple right off the bat. I would have mixed the color that I saw and and just plop it down. Whereas with pastel, I find that I can be a little bit more expressive and and a little bolder right off the bat and then decide how far I want to take it. Sometimes I'll leave it just very chunky and and bold. You really got a lot of form going on there. I mean, it really is showing form in that face. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Okay. It's fun. Let's get a little bit down here. Now, a little fun fact with dog noses, since I'm approaching this little dog nose here. Let's move him over. So if you've seen the movie E.T., which I'm sure many of you have, like, does that not look like E.T.'s head? Like, or is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> we got to love E.T. So we have these lovely little um, jigsaw puzzle shapes here. But I just, like, kind of map them out with my dark purple, and I use my black... Um, pastel pencil there and now I'm going to go in and throw in a little bit of some vibrant pink nose color I don't know what to call that like a red brown I spy with my little eye a little bit of wetness here and I'm not using a white I'm using a light blue so a white is great for those small little highlights but I haven't used a white at all yet except for that one little highlight in the eye which actually needs to be redone but um, there are values of colors that are just as light, you know, always go back to that wall of paint chips. Think about it. There are 10 million hues of light grays that, you know, could very much, very much be just white. A little reflected light. Once again, bring in that purple just because, and then of course, remember to make things look wet, I'm going to throw in a little blue. Now this is a very intense blue. So I'm just going to lightly put that in the pinkies up, throw a little blue down here. So I'm kind of just like randomly throwing in colors and values that I see. And then comes the texture. Think about what's easier starting with every hair when you draw a portrait or laying in as if it wasn't hairy and then putting the hair on top. The hair on top is the right answer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create little squiggles. That's another technical term. I'm using the corner of my pastel, my fancy chalk. And all I'm doing, I'll do it over here on this. I'm just squiggling like that. That's all I'm doing here to kind of create that, that leathery texture. And that's also simultaneously blending two colors together. Now when I'm squinting my eyes, this color is a very light color, which means I'm lightening my whole nose. Oh no. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to darken with my favorite color in squiggle mode. 
with my 244P. It's actually called Blue Violet, but I like sounding cool by saying the number. How's that working for you? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> I don't want to use that for the comments. Is she is she sounding cool with P forty four P D whatever it is P. Uh, the P question is, is from from May Mayona Urban. How do you keep sharp square corners on your pastels to do the details? That's a great question. So you know when some of these don't have corners anymore, but the more you use them, the more they flatten, therefore creating a new edge. Um, or you could break them like this one just got broke. So now I have three new edges. So there's that aspect. Um, but yeah, it, it's hard to create little um, little edges if you don't have a fresh cut or if it's a round one, it's hard to make little edges. Like I'm relying on this arc here to create little, you know, nuances. And then you have to figure out where is it going to land on my paper? What if it lands in the wrong spot? And that, you know, that happens. It's, it is what it is. You figure it out and you layer and you, you adjust, but you know, pastel pencils, that's what comes in handy with those. It, it does lend a hand to getting those little corners in. But like I said, they're just not as dark and they're not as intense as these chunks. I use a lot of the edge here and I, I don't know the name of that edge. I call it the magic edge when I work because it's not the flat side and it's not the corner, but the, it's this whole long edge. And it just sounds better when you say it's the magic edge. A lot, it pairs well with the magic paper. I used to teach a lot of kids classes too. So although I teach my adults the same way with our magic terminology, yeah. everything's magical. Everything's magical. Squiggle. Yeah, squiggle, magic, plop, all those fun terms. I mean, plop, I think, is kind of universal. We all know what plop means, right? Mm -hmm. All right, there's that little bit of blue there. Still light of the top of the bridge of the nose. Upwards, it gets a little bit darker. Um, and then I can kind of go in and start to make a little bit more, a um, little bit more light. So sometimes if I'm kind of unsure on a color, I'll just very lightly put it in because I know that I have the ability to layer pretty well. Now, if you're working on a paper that is a little bit... Um, not as magical, like uh, like typical Canson pastel paper. Like if you go to Michael's. Hey, hey, hey don't, 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 don't trash anybody. Don't say they're not as magical. I'll hear, I'll hear <laughs> they're magical in a different way. How about that? Okay. All right. okay. Good, good point. So yeah, if you get that, you'll find that you can only have so much pastel on that paper. It's not going to, it's really not going to um, let the pastel adhere and layer as much because it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't have that quality to it. Um, but some people like that. Some people want to be very minimal and have that background exposed. For me, it's not something that I choose to work with, but I know a lot of people that do enjoy that. So if you're kind of working and you're like, wait, why is mine not layering like Andrea's did? It's probably just because of the paper. That's really all it is. Um, uh, also, you might be using a little bit of too much soft pastel, a little heavy handed with that. And your paper's just like, stop it. I said, no, no more. So um, I don't usually use my finger, but sometimes I do like a little finger tap. But the reason I don't like to use my finger is because it got a little muddy there. It kind of merged my, my, um, my values a little bit. I got to get that nice little cheekbone back in. So I'm going to use my magic edge, pull down in the direction of the hair, always in the direction of the hair. It's like you're combing the dog, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's move over to this ear area. I see yeah, it. If you guys are liking this today, make sure to give her a thumbs up, a heart, applause, whatever. Uh, that way it'll spread the word. And if you guys would share this with other people so they can see it, that would be helpful. That would be awesome. And then you're going to hear from hundreds of thousands of people. Well, that's cool. Or maybe one or two. Oh, right. Well, that's, that's a friend is one friend is better than no friends, right? That's right. All right. Started with some us, uh, you guys want to win a prize. Tell us where you're watching from today. In the comments. There we go. A bit of I just sent a note off to my team while we were watching this to get you involved with us. Maybe invite you to teach at the plein air convention. Uh, some other things because you're so good. You're a great teacher. Oh, you're talking about me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. That would be lovely. From New Jersey. 
that would be fun. Where's the plein air convention? That's in um like I want to say south west. Plein air convention in May this year is going to be in Denver. Oh, uh, that's we're twelve hundred people, and we're already halfway sold out. That's so cool. And it's going to sell out fast because we have a celebrity guest coming. We're just getting the final details put together, but once we announce it, all the seats will be gone. Oh, I was going to say, can you say who it is? Yeah. Uh, but it's a yeah. national celebrity that you would know from television and film. Oh, I'm intrigued. Hello, Cape Town, South Africa. Welcome. And Mule Shoe, Texas. Oh. All right. I see There's a lot of the like right there. he or she's been got some lipstick on right now. Yeah, it's well. There's that melted rainbow, right? And now we got to calm it down. Bring in the bring in the quiet. Take a little bit of some dark here. Get that lip, that little filtrum. That's what that line is called. Mm -hmm. We have it on our upper lip. That's another word I use to sound smart. Filtrum. Throw that in there. Okay little bit of darkness there and then there's all dark hair that's going to push the face forward so i'm going to pull out my trusty little dark purple again and we're going to go to town under here get a little bit of that in let's pull some light fluff you got to fluff it out just you know it's like you're combing it are you just doing sound effects yep you gotta you have to <laughs> it's like the uh, I grew up watching Bob Ross, so like he did a lot of sound effects. <laughs> sound effects do help, though. They do, you know. Yeah, they do. <laughs> in all aspects of life. Yeah. Get some more dark in there. I'm squinting my eyes. Boom, knock that down. It's too light. Get out of here. Okay. Well, this is coming together beautifully. I just went ahead and did the other eye. Same thing as the other one. Copy, flip, paste. Easy as that. <laughs> so now what I'm planning on doing is merging over to the left side. Um, now the left side has a lot more shadows. So I have to be mindful of maintaining that idea of light and dark to help shape the form. So over here where I used a lot of lights on this side, I'll be using a little bit more of my, my good old 244P just to kind of map that area in. It's still lighter than the super darks, but it's not as dark as the light side. So there's always, there's life in shadows. You know, when people think about shadows, they think, oh, I got to make it dark. I got to make everything dark. But like, no, there's, there's stuff going on. It doesn't stop. It, they're just quieter. They're, they're darker. So I'm using this kind of a little bit everywhere just to kind of get that paper covered, just to kind of get my, um, my lines disappearing a little bit. Um, I, I use them, the, the coloring book te um, terminology where I want to cover up those, those lines as I'm doing that. Uh, we don't live in a coloring book world now, unless you're going for that, uh, that look, that's great, right. but I'm not. So okay. I've got to cover it up. Okay. Squinting though, constantly squinting. Now, if you wear glasses, a great technique is just take them off. Just work without your glasses for a little while. And if you're thinking that sounds scary, yeah, well, it probably is, but you know, it's, it's going to be fine. It will be all right. <laughs> something that scares you every day you'll never live an interesting life <laughs> exactly you gotta you gotta break out of your comfort zone sometimes right you know use okay. that bold color slap it down what's the worst thing that could happen what's the best thing that could happen right right exactly so same thing i did over here i'm starting off with this kind of pinky loud pink getting that in there getting that little skin around the eye so I saw little hints of this red. I'm just going to put it in. I see little bits of more of a, um, and you guys can see here. Let me show you. I don't want to yeah. put it on top of this, but you know, there's, there's little nuances of warm tones, not as warm as that, but I want to get that in right off the bat. Um, it's kind of like when you're, you're making food, you know, you put in, well, I don't really cook, so this is going to be a bad analogy, but um, you know. Wait, you're going to use a cooking analogy and you I don't cook well. <laughs> I mean, I can make some things. My husband's more like, the one that, that likes to cook. So. Well, you make hot dogs? 
I actually don't eat hot dogs. I'll make my fake dogs, but <laughs> oh, but I, don't eat hot dogs either, right? I mean, I can make some things. I, I definitely. I'm okay. I'm making myself sound worse than I am. But anyhow, it's like, you know, I would say it's make making soup. You got to start with like, you know, water or stock in the pot, right? Same thing here. This is my stock. And then I can decide if it's too salty. Is it too sweet? Is it too this? Is it too that? And then I can calm it down or I can liven it up again. That's all artwork is. It's just a, a big batch of soup. That's all. All right. Calming that ear down, squinting my eyes yet again. Oop, too light. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to knock it down. Knock it down. Light touch, though, because I want to keep all those colors there. I just want to, you know, make them a little bit softer. Yeah. Oh, is that a friend, yeah. little ant. He's climbing right there. Yeah. Hello, ant. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. No, I'm not. He's hanging out. He's right there. He wants to watch, too. <laughs> I think I feel like he's been around in my video Half hell dust. <laughs> the yeah, grains of half hell dust are as big as he or she is. Maybe that's why he's still around. Well, now he's in my pastel box. So maybe he's just gained superpowers of like, I can withstand all things. Okay. So that ear, the shadow part is better. Now the highlights, I started off very, very warm. And now I'm just going to kind of lightly cool them down I'm using a light blue. It's kind of pulling out a little bit of light here. Gentle touch pinky up. A little bit of light over here. Now I haven't done a background, but the background plays a very vital role in all of your values. So, you know, that's going to change. You know, if I did the background, say a red, that's going to bring out a lot of these red. I would never do a red, but if I were to do something very light, it's going to make the dog once again, look, you know, like a darker dog. If I went even lighter over here, which I will do in a, uh, in a second, but um, yeah, now wearing clothes that are the color of your eyes. I could do that yellowy tone. That's going to make my dog look extra purple. Yep. Right. Or, you know, or, or wearing clothes that, that the complementary color of your eyes, you know, like wearing green, uh, wearing red if you wear, have green eyes or, or vice yes. versa. So you want to be thinking about that. Absolutely. My go-to background is always like a, like a blue gray, which is funny that I'm using that color paper, but, um, like when I'm painting, I, I kind of gravitate towards that. But I've been trying to like really think about, you know, what would what would really kind of make things stand out a little bit more. But that's my go-to. I find like, oh, hello, Ant. Um, my blue-gray is just like a great default for so many options for dogs, at least. I mean, I do mostly animals, so. But I will do whatever people want me to do. I mean, I, I've done people. I've done all of sorts of things but i bet you get a lot of dog commissions yeah animals are my passion so happy to to stare at them all day yeah love them i, I wanted a, to be a vet a growing up yeah i saw the, the one that um mm. i was watching another one woman who did the an oil uh i think her name was joanne 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 Manji. yeah she's yeah she was fun to watch i liked watching her she was cool yeah she was cool all right, I left this little muzzle all alone. Come here, muzzle. I see some after seeing this. It's such a great medium. I'm like, I swear, I've been <laughs> kind of migrating all my students into pastel, oil and pastel. They're my favorites. They both have their their pros and cons. So yeah. Yeah. I do it all. I do watercolor, pastel, gouache. I love gouache. Uh, gouache is a uh, very forgotten i feel medium i have one oh, student it's, who does it's coming back though you know it was a big medium with the illustrators back in the mm -hmm. 40s what's coming back uh, i'm trying to decide what i'm going to take with me to new zealand i think i'm taking oil but I'm not sure okay well you should just take a little bit of everything well i'm limited in weight okay well <laughs> I, always, I always have at least two things with me so i'll definitely color with me but, That's um, now, have you been to New Zealand before? This is my third trip. Wow. New Zealand sounds fantastic. It's pretty, pretty swell. Yeah. Gorgeous. Uh, there's one of my favorite artists. He, um, I believe he's in New Zealand. Uh, Andrew Tischler? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I sent a note to Andrew to get together with him while we're there. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I'm so starstruck right now. <laughs> oh. That's great. 
Very cool. Well, with you too, but I already met you like, you know, an hour ago. So very, very awesome. You need to get a life. If you're starstruck, you need to get a life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got three little boys at home. That's, I got my hands full. Really? What ages? I do. I have a, um, he'll be eight. And then I have one that just turned six. And then I have a one and a half year old. How do you find time to paint? Well, my husband's home. So, <laughs> so that's how I will paint. We'll find time. There we go. Starting to get him all plot. Let's play, let's play around a little bit with this background now. Um, let's grab a... I'm kind of feeling a pale, a pale greenish kind of olive. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Still light. Now edges are important. This is where I can reshape this ear. It needs to come in. It needs to flop a little. It needs to fling a little. There we go. We got the flop and the fling now. Let's get that in. Just block it in. See what happens. All right. Now this edge here needs to be smushed, smushy, mushy. I could use my finger. I have to use a clean finger, preferably. And that's gonna make my eyes go back to the focal point. Soft edges recede, hard edges um, your eye will go to. You're in charge. What do you want your viewer's eye to go to, right? It's like I'm a magician. I can make You're a good teacher. Good. Where did you learn all this stuff? Uh, well, I went to Hartford Art School in Connecticut. Uh -huh. Um, so I went there, I majored in illustration, art history. I learned a bunch. What I loved about being in that program was the fact that they, they taught me every media, well, except pastel. <laughs> I think we had one class with pastel, but they taught me a lot of different mediums and I can work in any medium and it's great. And I love it. Um, I do gravitate towards my favorite mediums, but, um, no, it was a very fantastic school. Uh, I met my husband there and everything and it's, it's great. Highly recommend. There we go. Nice light. Yeah, now the dog is outdoors. Yeah, and he reads as a dark dog now, not a, you know, possibly who knows what kind of dog. And I'm yeah. using my and finger I back like, here to soften. Yeah, I like that soft edge. Yeah. Now up here, since up here is very light, I could go a hair darker no pun intended. Um, not this dark. I'm just being a little crazy right off the bat. And then I'm going to calm it down a little bit. See if I like it. Because I have that magic paper. Remember, I could do whatever I want. Right. To a certain yeah, we're extent. We're not doing what you're doing at the top because it's a little framed tightly. Oh, okay. So I don't have to worry about it up there. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Let's go on to the other side. Let's... There we go. There we okay, go. Okay, here's a question from Carolyn. Paletta, what do you do if you put a color down and then you don't want to try to put a new color over it or try to brush mostly off, most of it off? Uh, oh, I covered I covered right there. <laughs> this is a great example. Um, can you guys see down there? This little part. I shortened his body. I'm not going to brush it off. This is the magic paper. I can just add it right in, add a soft pastel, and you know I can just fluff it right back out. Um, I don't usually brush things away. I don't erase it because since I have this paper working for my advantage, I can just layer right on top. So, I mean, there does come a point where your paper does say, even this paper at some point says, okay, Andrea, I've had enough. Please give me a break. So this is what I do. You could take rubbing alcohol and you can paint that little part that you made a boo-boo on and let it dry. And then you could cover it right on top. Cause what that does is it embeds the pastel into the paper. So now that paper becomes that color and the pigment will not mix anymore with the colors laying on top. So you kind of created your own paper again. And I'll do that with things I don't like. Um, if I don't like a piece, I will just uh, take some rubbing alcohol, paint it right on top and go from there. Um, there's one piece actually that I'm staring at, which I did an alcohol background on. I'll bring it over so I can show you real fast. I put blue all in the background. Okay. I put blue all in the background and then I did alcohol over it. So it gave me a base of blue and then I was able to layer more blue on top but have that nice kind of primed surface in the background. So it's a great technique for like, you know, uh oh moments and uh, creating a, a primed surface of a different color. If maybe you're left with only one color that you don't like in your pad. You could just take a color, throw it all on there, 
put some rubbing alcohol on it, and now you have a new color piece of paper that you might like better, which is great. So, Andrea, why don't you come back on camera because we're out of time. All right. Sounds good. Let me come okay. on. Okay. And, okay. and we got to figure out how to do it. There she is. There she there is. <laughs> I'm here. Everybody <laughs> give Andrea a round of applause. And we're going to have a test and see if anybody can pronounce your last name. <laughs> John Chiglia. Yeah, right? that's right. Yep. Okay. Andrea John Chiglia, thank you so much for being on Pastel Live. Uh, did I say Pastel Live? Hello. Thank you for doing a Pastel Live demo on Art School Live. Too many lives. And uh, we put your website in the comments. And... Um, the paper you're using and all those things. So you guys can scroll through the comments to find all those things. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life. Anything coming up that we need to know about? So I am starting all my fall classes right now. I offer some Zoom classes. I offer some in-person um, classes at the art centers that I work at. Oh, the ants on me now. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> get off of me. Yeah, and uh, workshops, uh, <laughs> workshops, classes, all of those. I also offer um, some pre-recorded demos from my Zoom and bundles that are all on my website. So there's always things to have some Andrea in your life with. <laughs> yeah, cool. And uh, we'll we'll uh, invite you to an upcoming event of uh, Pastel Live or, or a convention or something. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to invite you. You're did, you did a great job today. You didn't know this, but you were Oh, I, you know what? You cut out. I didn't, I didn't hear that compliment. Hopefully it was. Oh, there was no compliment. I didn't compliment you. No. <laughs> I missed it. No, I said, what I said is that we're going to invite you to something in the future. We don't know what it's going to be, but you were being tested and you passed the test. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being on today, Andrea. Thank you so much for having me.